I feel very fortunate. My father was an early pioneer in electronics and computer technology. So from a very early age, I got exposed to uh, to a lot of technology. Um, when I was young, I had we had one of the first Apple II uh, computers, and started you know when I was young just programming and things like that in the the 70s. And at the same time, my mother's side of the family, my mother is from Vienna. She's a very musical family. So music was always a very big, important part of, of my life. So music and technology, from as early as I can remember, was uh, a huge interest. And I, I uh, saved up and bought my first synthesizer when I was 12 years old and s started experimenting with it and taking it apart. And um, the, one of the best motivations to learn electronics is when you're young and you take something apart and then it doesn't work anymore. Then you have great motivation to learn because now, now I had a synthesizer that was worthless. So I started studying and, and experimenting and really you could say both music and technology was a passion and a hobby that just happened to become my career. It's a little funny story because the origin had nothing to do with it ever becoming a company name. We actually started our company way back in 1985 as a consulting company, and we were called Fast Forward Designs. And we were known because we were a company that worked behind the scenes in developing products for other industries. I'm sorry, for other companies in this industry. We designed over 40 products for Alesis, including the ADAT and Quadriverb, and products for Digidesign, and a number of other companies, and um, just enjoyed uh, you know, innovating in a lot of areas. But when we wanted to start doing the research into guitar modeling, we, we weren't sure what it might become, so we wanted to just have it be a little secret project until we saw how it could develop. Now, of course, when we started investigating classic tube amps, especially early ones that had no master volume, if you really want to do measurements and analysis of, of high gain sounds, there's no other way but to turn an amp up very loud. <clears throat> so that meant at our little office, there was often loud guitar playing going on which if you didn't know what we were working on, wouldn't make a lot of sense, since at that time we were working on, again, effects processors, drum machines, keyboards, and so on. So we decided it'd be best if we stopped playing guitar when any of our clients would come visit us. So Fast Forward Designs had five phone lines. So we decided if we saw someone coming from uh, maybe one of our clients, the receptionist should get on the PA in the office to tell us that we had a phone call on line six which was really just a code to say, time to put away the guitars, get back to work, um, so that we don't raise any suspicion about why we'd be playing loud guitars all the time. <clears throat> so a, it was just a code name. Um, and uh, when much later we actually developed something we thought could be a real product, we knew we needed to have a company name. And uh, our initial goal when we started trying to think of a name was, uh, I wanted it to be two syllables. And I didn't want it to necessarily mean something directly to the company. Some of the companies I admired so much, you know, like Apple, Roland, Sony, are names that what they mean is what it means to you based on your experience with these great products. Um, and two syllables is easier to say. Fast Forward Designs was a pretty long name. And uh, it's kind of hard like naming a band to come up with a name, we tried all kinds of ideas, and, and finally, uh, Susan Wolf, one of the co-founders, just said, well, why not Line 6? And we realized it seemed like a perfect fit for uh, what we were doing, and that's how the name came about. I think in almost any area, there's always skeptics about how technology evolves. And I think, you know, personally, I, uh, it doesn't bother me in that I think for any musician, they really should find the tools that serve them best. And if you have a 30-year-old guitar amplifier and guitar and you get the best sounds you have, and all the sounds you ever wanted, you don't need any new technology and that's fine. But um, some guitarists, uh, as a result, don't take the opportunity to learn what might be possible and then they're just limiting themselves because as technology evolves, there, it opens up so many doors creatively. And you know, often people forget that the, the legends that we all admire 
Jimi Hendrix or Jimmy Page, they, they were pioneers using very new technology because all the gear that we consider classic today was new then. And they invented new sounds and, and created so many things that we love today because they were open to new technology. So I think the same thing, same opportunity exists for guitarists today. Those that want to, by exploring new technology, they have the opportunity to pioneer the, the future of, of music. Well, my career um, in developing products, uh, I've always tried to use technology to fill a real need for musicians. And in my early days, um, since I'm originally a keyboard player, that centered around synthesizers and then recording and signal processors. And I was, you know, making tools for for a range of musicians. And all of technology by the 90s was evolving to where a keyboard player could get any sound they wanted at the touch of a button. Plugins were starting, so producers and recording engineers could do almost anything they wanted. Yet guitar players were still stuck with having to just have the limitations of the specific gear they had. And when they wanted new sounds, they typically had to buy new gear, reconfigure it, or get new amps, mic things up differently, and so on. So it was a very, uh, you could get great tones, but it was a very cumbersome prod, uh, process. And for some people, it was just too expensive as well. So we really felt there was a need there that it would be really inspiring if guitar players could also be able to get any sound they wanted much more quickly so they could focus more on music instead of having to always focus on the gear. And uh, we started as a research project because we knew if, and started around 1994, we said if we, could, if we could create software models, numerical models of tube amplifiers and find a way to ma model that in software, it would be able to open up the door to having a wide range of algorithms available so that you could get any sound you want. So that's, that was really the beginnings. And uh, just 20 years ago this year was when we launched our first guitar amp, the Axis 212. The, the very first product we came out with was called the Axis 212. And it was a 212 combo, actually stereo combo, 100 watts with amp models and effects. And uh, by today's standards, it's, 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 uh, you know, it's definitely a little old. Maybe it's now vintage modeling. Um, and uh, some would accuse me of having uh, designed something. It looks like a guitar amp designed by a keyboard player. It's not, uh, not the most friendly product, but it was the first of a modeling amplifier. And I think what was exciting about it is we had so many people interested because there was a large group of guitarists who really saw the potential for what this could mean. But like any technology, whether it be you know, the first digital cameras, um, you know, they, they show potential, but they're not necessarily uh, able to deliver everything that you might want. So what's been crucial in this 20 years is that we never feel that we are finished. Every generation of, of modeler or effect or then the modeling guitars, we continue to improve. We get better and better processing and um, better algorithms so that we can create the best tones possible. But uh, over those 20 years, certainly landmarks that were really important to us. Um, the first pod came out at the very end of 1998. And I think that's, for many people, how they first got introduced to Line 6, because it enabled so many people to be able to record guitar so much more easily than they could before. The DL4 delay pedal which uh, most, most guitarists just call the green pedal, <laughs> has been uh, really great, still used by so many professional guitarists today. Uh, the Variax um, has really opened a lot of doors for a lot of musicians. Um, and it's hard, it's hard to pick a favorite. There's been so many really uh, exciting products we've had a chance to, to work on over the 20 years. But uh, we're, we're still not done. <laughs> Being a, being a part of Yamaha has really opened up a whole new exciting chapter for Line 6. I'm, one of the reasons that we decided to become a part of Yamaha is we saw how passionate a Yamaha is for music. It's unusual to have a company that's so big still really understand their core purpose and how important music is to the world. 
And when we realized how much we share the same passions, and we realized how much Yamaha wanted to keep Line 6 and its innovation spirit alive, that it was really about Line 6 staying Line 6, but also being able to be a partner with Yamaha and share our expertise and learn from each other, we realized that really opened up a great opportunity for us going forward. So um, it means that we get, get uh, you know, access to a lot more uh, great minds and get to collaborate on more ideas. Um, so far that's shown up in the very X standard, being able to utilize Yamaha's great strength in making high quality and yet affordable uh, instruments combined with our technology. And uh, there's lots more fun we hope to, to share in the future in, in different ways that Yamaha and Line 6 can collaborate. Uh, the deal for and all of our um, you know effects modelers have been really successful for us. I think, um, and, and we have a great interest in effects as well. You could say that the Line Six products, uh, the processors are kind of divided into two categories. There's the products that, if you want to, could be your entire rig. So they include amp modeling, all of the effects, cabinets, microphones, and so on, and you know up to our our flagship now, the Helix. And then there's the, the products that are more specifically intended to incorporate into just whatever you, whatever else you might want to do. So the DL4, Delay Metal, are also all the M-series effects. Um, and we're interested in, in doing both. You could say the Helix kind of lives in actually in both categories because we really set out to make Helix something that if you want could be everything you need but also really can incorporate into any setup you want. You've got effects, four effects loops you can program, you can switch your amp channels, you could even mic your, your tube amps cabinet and bring it back into Helix. Um, but uh, we continue to explore in both areas and uh, uh, continue, we'll continue to make more products to serve, serve both needs. But we also will continue to make the DL4 and the, the M-series effects for as, as long as people like them, because they, these have now kind of become classics of their own. So uh, we're very happy to keep making those. Well, some people worry about guitar, guitar in general, and that you know it doesn't seem to be as prominent in today's music. Uh, is it going to stay as popular? And I think that um, I think guitar is is truly one of the most important instruments that we have. It's, it's uh, so expressive and such an exciting instrument to watch be performed. I'd much rather see a guitarist on stage than someone just standing behind a turntable. I've, I have nothing against other types of music, but you know, ex how a musician can express themselves in guitar, how much each individual musician's personality can come through, even using the same gear, is really exciting. But I think that um, guitar, because of the evolution of technology, the guitarists who want to embrace the leading edge of what's possible, I think are going to be the ones who pioneer how guitar becomes more and more relevant again in today's music. Because being able to have that great expressive control that guitar represents, but be able to explore new sounds and use it in new ways is what that's how guitar became prominent in the first place at the, at the beginnings of rock and roll. You know, so many new sounds. So, so I, I think this is probably the most exciting time there could be to be a guitarist. Of course, there's lots of great tools from Line 6. There's lots of great tools from other companies, too. And I think, you know, the guitar players who are open to exploring those, all of those different tools are going to really create the, the music of the future. And, uh, that's, that's what makes it fun to develop new products, see how people choose to use them.